Where are you guys going? You're following me? Okay. All right. What do you guys need? Do you need love? Is that what you need? Oh, my lovely. Hi. Hi, my baby. You guys are so, so cute. Hi, my dear Hi. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hamily Homestead. My name is Letty, and today I want to show you what I did to start my seeds off grid. Most of you know that we are currently off grid. We do have some power, but it's never going to be enough to keep my seeds with a heating mat and with lights and everything. So I realized that I was going to have to find more of a primitive way to start seeds because even though when I lived in Utah, I could do it on a window and it would stay warm enough to have some somewhat good sprouting, I still knew that over here I wasn't going to be able to dedicate a window just to start seeds. Number one, my windows are too small and we also have a lot of overcast days. It could be in the 70s but with no sun during the spring. So of course that was going to play a major role on how I was going to start seeds. So because of that I started doing my research way before we moved and I was following the channel Dirt Patch Heaven. Some of you mentioned that you follow her. She has very back to basics methods to gardening and to do animals. So, because of that, I decided to start following every single one of her videos where she was building a hotbed and she has many of them. So I follow her instructions and build two garden beds that right now are not heating up. And I couldn't understand why, but basically what I didn't see is that in her latest videos about hotbeds, they needed to be completely closed in. And so the ones that I have, they have chicken wire. So there's a lot of heat that will um, kind of go through the sides. And I'm going to fix that because I really like the concept of having hotbeds. I think it's a great solution when you don't have the hot, hot weather that some of these veggies need. So I am going to show you in this video a little bit of how I built it and kind of the, the process it is very so simple. Yesterday I did a little clip and I shared with you how hot this hotbed is compared to the other tall garden beds that I started last year. So you can see almost like a 30 degree difference. Right now, this greenhouse that I'm showing you is 93 degrees and um, it's keeping tomatoes and all my bell peppers and some cucumbers, everything. It's staying nice and warm. The soil is super warm and whatever light we get throughout the day, it's enough to get the light, to be the light that it needs to grow. So right now I'm going to show you how it's... <laughs> you got to stop, you're tickling me. So right now I'm going to show you how uh, to build it and how it works. The benefits of this greenhouse is that it's not only a greenhouse because it's clear and the light can go through and it's kind of sealed so you don't get cold air even at night. And on top of that, one more benefit of it is that the soil <laughs> the soil is warm so i hope that it, this helps out somebody out there um, i wanted to show you i'm almost done with this hotbed i got those l-shaped brackets and i put the last three pieces now i have to use that it's like a plywood like material so I am going to cover this area, then put some plastic that is there, but I don't know if you can see, but the bottom part, the barn clean out, it's becoming soil.
Now to create one of this greenhouses slash hotbeds, all I'm doing is creating a frame. Now the frame is pretty simple. A pallet in each end. There's two pallets. Once you have that, I cut three 2x4s uh, to six feet. As you can see, there's three of them. So then we have enough of a frame to attach the the inside the inside of the hotbed now and all you do is attach it with an L bracket I don't know if you see it right there but there's this an L bracket that is so very simple to attach and really you don't even need two screws all you have to make sure is that there's enough wood on the other side to get attached so after you do that you have a frame you put this lining that could be cardboard whatever you have available that will cover this uh, frame on the inside and then you put the plastic material then you really just using whatever I had laying around and I it was gonna end up in the garbage so that is some part of roofing that is plastic and all then you're gonna start filling it up now I did a couple of layers the first layer was some sticks now the carbon I'm gonna be using is some sticks and you know a lot of debris that I have around the yard you can totally use boxes or you know other materials but this is the one that I have so this is the one that is gonna cover most of the hotbed slash greenhouse I did a layer of carbon, which is all the sticks and things. Now I am going to do a layer of the barn clean out, the straw, the hay, and the manure. I'm gonna do a thick one on top of this. And the only thing that I could say is try to make it as even as you can. Like I put a lot of sticks in that direction, but then they don't get to the tip. So then I had to fill them in with that. If you leave like too many holes in this, then it's super uneven on the top and it's not a good thing. Because when you start planting, um, you know, things are not, they don't water even and that kind of stuff if you're gonna use those flats that have the water underneath. So if, you know, if my experience taught me something is try to make it the layers that are more solid, try to make them as even as possible because now the straw, the hay and manure that I'm going to put on top of here is just going to go in between the cracks and basically it's going to start to fill in the gaps that we have here. So let me... Here. Now I've been cleaning the goat house very regularly because the babies have been staying inside with Clara. So I did a layer of sticks and I did a layer of straw, hay and barn clean out, which is a bunch of pee and poop from the goats. The next step is to add another layer of sticks another layer of straw and hay with manure and then okay so I put all the sticks and carbon and now I filled it up to the top well almost to the top with all the manure that I had piling up here as you can see it was already decomposing so I still have this much room here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put rabbit manure tea so it starts to heat up. Oh, 
Why? Uh huh. And then tomorrow we are gonna use this, which is a shower, corner shower, I guess. That's what it is. I'm gonna wash it tonight and we're gonna put it over there and we're gonna cover the sides so that way I can start my peppers, my tomatoes and all those heat loving stuff. Now this one that is the greenhouse you can see the moisture inside this condensation and when we put it in same as it was before it is 92.9 oh it's keep, it keeps going 93 deg degrees Fahrenheit and on the top I put a little bit of soil but it's not necessary I'm gonna move this and see if we can see some steam coming but there's not you can't see it but if you touch it it's warm and just by the thermometer it's showing 93 degrees so what 30 degrees warmer than the other one and as I mentioned I'm using a shower a cor a corner shower like this and you saw how I prepared this bed on the side that doesn't have anything we put some plastic and you can see the condensation inside here so I'm gonna close it in here I have uh, bell peppers, tomatoes, jalapenos, and all kinds of um, kind of warm weather uh, crops. And this being so warm, it's really gonna trick him into thinking that it's time to sprout. Okay, so this is another doll garden bed and we're gonna check the temperature this one is not full of manure like the other one is that I'm trying to use as a greenhouse so let's put it in the soil and Okay, so it seems like it's 57. I hope that this video helps you to, you know, have a different idea, have a different method. Um, if if you don't have access to power where you have your garden, if you don't, if you can't afford to buy a greenhouse, if you want something that is more effective as far as heating up the ground and maybe using it while you know it's still cold outside then I hope that this method helps you as much as it's helping me and please stay tuned I'm gonna do a playlist where I'm gonna share with you the process on how things how fast things are sprouting and how successful it was last year I tried it and it didn't work because I didn't you know close it in so now that it's working I'm so excited to share with you the results so thank you so much for being here today guys if you're new around here please remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you are notified every time I upload a new video uh, typically there's new videos Monday through Fridays I work really really hard to share with you something a snippet of what's going on around here there's tons of new products
Now, if you remember, Mr. White was one of the skittish kids, was the only one that was a little bit skittish, and now he is trying to buy my heart. He is, he's, he's being very successful. He's being very successful at it. He is, he reminds me so much of his dad. And Rocky is such a sweet boy. Uh, it, if he wasn't so related to the other goats, I would totally keep him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you though. And I love when you don't eat my hair. I really appreciate that. My sweet, sweet white boy. Hi, Mr. White. Oh my goodness, those rocky eyes. You're so sweet. I love you. And you love my hair. <laughs> what do you want? Want kisses? You want to eat my hair? Well, that, my hair is not for eating. That sucks, doesn't it? I was gonna. <laughs> Can we just not do that right now? Back to what I was saying. So, because of that. So, <laughs> please don't chew on me. Come here. Come here, Athene. Come here, Athene. You, you're shitty. Mm, you're a silly girl. I love you. Please stop chewing me. <laughs> and Athene? Athene? Girlfriend? You're your father's son. You're so cute.